Hello and welcome to this live podcast brought to you by Parabit Systems. I'm your host, James Kent. There's a saying at the Brownsville South Padre Island International Airport located in Brownsville, Texas, and that is, let the journey take flight. And we're going to talk about some exciting news that is sure to bring a lot of journeys to passengers' futures. Earlier this year, a new passenger terminal opened up at the BRO, and that is great news indeed, as BRO is the closest airport to South Padre Island. We're going to get into a lot of cool specifics about this project and the -the state-of-the-art technology in place in the new terminal. And to help me do that are my two guests. First, I am pleased to welcome on the show, Bryant Walker. Bryant is the Assistant City Manager and Aviation Administrator for the City of Brownsville. Bryant, welcome. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. And next we have Rob Laponis, the CEO and president of Parabit Systems. Parabit is a strategic partner on this project and was heavily involved in many of the technology systems deployed throughout the new terminal. Rob, a warm welcome to you too. Thank you very much. Bryant, uh, take me through the need for this new passenger terminal and how it's going to impact the economy for Brownsville and the lower Rio Grande Valley. Well, uh, initially, the economic impact is just massive, just from the construction alone. Mm -hmm. Um, The previous terminal was outdated, outmoded, uh, built in 1972. It had outlived its useful life. Uh, It didn't comply with most of the regulations out there for TSA, for CBP, for the international component to the airport. Mm -hmm. Um, So it it had a high, high maintenance cost just on um, day-to-day use. So if you put all that together, it it was necessary to build a new terminal. So... Then when we started to build the new terminal again, uh, the economic impact of building it and retaining what was here, a lot of people said, build it and they'll come. And it, actually the, the inverse works as well. If you don't build it, they'll leave. So mm. just to maintain the jobs, maintain the uh, service and connectivity for the community, uh, we had to build a new one. So when we did that, we wanted to make sure that we future-proofed the terminal itself and built the technology and components in it that we could expand on um, and integrate you know, technologies that yet don't exist, uh, as well as the latest technology that um, Parabit provided a lot of uh, when we built this. So we expanded the terminal from the initial 37,000 square feet old terminal. We expanded this one into a 92,000 square foot terminal uh, with a complete compliant FIS and checkpoint for security and those types of things. And then, of course, we did add a lot of those uh, technology components, everything from the, you know, for the curb to gate passenger experience. Um, I'm not sure. I, I think that answers your question. Yeah. Um, but, you know, to make sure that this new terminal was truly state of the art and could meet the needs of not only today's passengers, but the future demands, um, you know, what was critical to build into the terminal to support those needs, especially when you're not sure what those needs might be? Well, certainly the infrastructure itself, uh, you've got to make sure that you have adequate power, that we, we looked at the fiber for any data connectivity uh, for, the again, those future needs that we're unaware of. Um, so we, we really built the infrastructure in here. Um, you know, behind the scenes, we put in a lot of drainage and underground utility mm-hmm. corridors and things like that, so that it's easily modifiable in the future. But in the building itself, we actually ran additional conduit, conduit, conduit that's in excess of what we need for the access control, for the CCTV, and even a lot of the biometrics. So all of that, we built it into the design uh, very early in, in, you know, in that design phase so that we can um, add everything that we wanted as well as those, uh, the future technologies as they roll out. Absolutely. Um, I, I want to bring Parabit into the conversation. Uh, Rob, take me through some of the solutions you provided for this terminal project. I, I'm sure there are many considerations that the average person would never factor in, but that your team needed to put in place to make this project a success. Um, several pro- several products that we introduced to, to Brian and his team, when, one of which is you know installing analytic cameras at all touch points from entering the facility to exiting the facility. We wanted to create an environment that through uh, facial recognition, they would be able to eventually tie into backend systems to be able to identify people as they're entering facilities. And then until they get to the point and they exit the jet bridge and get on the plane and as well as supervise if they get off the plane and meander back into the terminal. Uh, various di- different uh, digital touch points uh, built into the welcome center, built into kiosks, 
as well as uh, curbside pylons with information on the terminal itself and the services that are provided by the terminal, as well as attractions in the area. Um, we also uh, have provided and worked closely with Brian and the CPP uh, with uh, the FIS podiums where we created a kind of like a future proof uh, enclosure that addressed all the needs of the technology that's utilized today, but as well as makes the enclosure completely expandable to address any future uh, analytics that the CPP and FIS introduce into those areas. Um, and you know, the charging stations, which, you know, we've always found through all of the projects that we've done with many of our uh, airport customers, we basically have leveraged charging all from the land side area to the air side area of the terminal to mm -hmm. make it a very comfortable experience since, you know, most people, they, you know, their hands, their, their phones are constantly in their hands. So we wanted to address their needs for power. So that was a very important aspect, which, you know, Brian was very open into looking into the designs that we had proposed and uh you know had eventually deployed rob i feel like we're talking about a science fiction movie here it's amazing <laughs> all of this technology it really does sound like the future is now um obviously with the new terminal opening at the beginning of this year uh, a portion of the construction had to take place during COVID 19. Uh, how did the pandemic affect the construction of the new terminal and what if anything about the design changed as a result so who's that question to? Is that to me? Oh, it could be either one. I'll, I'll be glad to field that one. Sure. So as, as, a, as the pandemic rolled out, what we saw as an impact to the project itself was really the supply chain issues. So we were looking at products and uh, materials that the contractor needed to actually make the terminal, you know, complete <laughs> on time. Uh, those were the challenges we really faced. For the terminal itself, we'd actually envisioned um, being able to build out those additional technologies and even phase some things in. That's why we built in conduits that we didn't have a use for when mm. we started construction. Yeah. So sort of a lot of the elements that Rob was talking about, the, the cameras at doorways, those were things that were proposed for biometric access control. Um, as technologies advanced over the past year and a half even, a uh, very recent uh, history here where uh, there's a lot of ticketless um, baggage uh, handling and, and, and there's even LPRs, uh, license plate readers for parking systems and things like that. So there's a lot of technologies that incorporate using cameras, uh, facial recognition and everything, and not just like the access to control, but also the, the um, touchless ticketing and check-in services for the airlines. So we knew we wanted all of that in the terminal um, at some point. Uh, so as our budget sort of expanded a little bit, um, over the project, we were able to um, go back to Parabit and and incorporate the same technology. So we had consistency throughout the terminal in all of those, um, the, the devices we were using. So whether it's the CCTV, whether it's access control, or whether it's even supporting the efforts of the airlines in having their biometric check-ins and everything, all of those devices are the same that run on the same system and supported by the same backbone. So that allows us to have flexibility even in our maintenance and keep those costs controllable as well. So, you know, it, it's a, it's a, I don't know, it's a whole system. It's an ecosystem of technology. It's not just a single device here or there. So again, as, as we expanded the project, uh, we did want to have more, you know, touchless points. We wanted to have less, um, you know, less things to, to spread uh, any of these germs and things that are going around right now. So we did add uh, the antimicrobial surfaces that Parabit provided for all of our countertops, like virtually every countertop and table within the terminal. It has this antimicrobial coating, um, some sort of, I'm not a scientist, maybe Rob can elaborate, but uh, it's some sort of um, uh, silver oxide. It's a or silver ion based. <laughs> there yeah, you go. Silver ion based product that has like a five year uh, life expectancy to kill any bacteria that comes in contact with the surface. Well, that, that really helps, you know, ease passengers' concerns. Yeah. And then on top of that, we didn't want them, you know, messing with plugs and touching everything. So we put, uh, or Parabit rather, provided us with the wireless charging units for literally every table within the terminal right now. And, uh, and then, of course, the back of seating charging that they provide as well 
which also gives us a marketing uh, surface uh, since it, it is above the seating itself. So all of these were benefits, not just for COVID. I mean, COVID was certainly a concern, but like I said, it's more of a supply chain concern than how we actually operate the airport. Uh, as we operate the airport, we are looking to uh, do as much protection, as much touchless interaction as we can. Uh, and, and again, uh, antimicrobial surfaces and the uh, touchless access control through facial verification with the, with the um, security system we have. But then, as Rob pointed out, every portal, every doorway, um, and, and a lot of the counters, the ticket counters, the gate counters, they all have cameras built in so that we can tie those in when the airlines are ready to start moving to the biometric uh, you know, entry and exit. Um, and there, so there's really three phases. There's the um, airline cameras and access control or uh, touch, uh, I'm sorry, touchless and, um, and uh, ticketing and, and all that. There's the access control and security component for the airport. And there's also the CBP component. So Rob kind of touched on the, the podiums that we provided for CBP. So we collaborated with headquarters in DC with the CBP so they could move from a booth, a very large sort of obtrusive thing that's uh, in the CBP Federal Inspection Station check-in area. We moved from that to a much more slim purpose-built podium that does have all these um, touchless interactive devices. So you can, you know, the, the user can go through and actually scan their own documents and mm. it's built to accept future devices that CBP will provide for scanning your entry and exit documents, um, passports, IDs, and everything like that, as well as a fingerprint station uh, so that they don't have to interact directly with the agent on duty. They just interact with the devices that are there. And then there's also, like I said, the built-in camera, which is going to capture the biometric images as well um, and match that to the manifest. So there's three components to the, uh, to the imaging um, aspect of it. And all of that's provided by, by Parabit and nice sleek design that the airport was looking for. Well, I, I think it's a great example of what you were talking about that you were thinking ahead in this planning, really thought about the future because frictionless experiences uh, now as a result of the pandemic is a priority for passengers. And it sounds like that you didn't have to do too much to suddenly integrate that when the pandemic hit. It was already something that you were focused on, right? That's correct. I mean, you know, uh, from the design standpoint, we met with the, you know, airport um, ad administration as well as the designers, design team and engineers. And we indicated that we wanted ability to do anything with this. And if we want this terminal to be able to um, live a, the longest possible life, we needed to make sure that we were prepared for the unknown and, uh, and being able to use devices that are modular, uh, the devices that Fairbits provided, uh, whether it's the charging stations, the wireless charging, which is here for, it's going to be here for quite a while, I would imagine. Um, but even that is backward. It's going to be something we can backward compatibility type, you know, work with so that we can, um, make adjustments in the future without it being obtrusive. So the wireless chargers we have are all flush with the counters. I mean, there's no wires anywhere. Right. So you just lay your devices on that and they charge up. The cameras are built into the doorways and portals. So they're, they're very discreet. Um, and even their counter mounted units, those things are, are uh, able to be upgraded. If the technology, if the sensors improve, we can actually go into the modules and remove those, swap them out. And, and we're in a position to continue to progress and upgrade with the technology as it improves. Um, so I, I think everybody on the team was really looking at, at the future and making sure that we didn't paint ourselves into a corner. Now the new terminal, is it primarily focused on leisure travel with its close proximity to South Padre Island or is it a multi-focus terminal? Well, historically, the airport's not been able to support larger aircraft because of the size of the facility. It was really a, the bottleneck for the, for the service that the airport could provide to the community. Uh, the terminal was so small, it could really only handle the small regional jets. Um, that gave us a customer base that was about 85% business uh, travel. So now that we have the new terminal, we can actually accommodate aircraft up to a 777. Uh, certainly all of the low cost and ultra low cost carriers, which fly the larger small aircraft, like uh, even the A320s, A319s, uh, 737s. 
Um, we can we can accommodate those now. We can get low cost carriers in here. So we we fully expect to be recovering a lot of what we call leakage traffic mm. that is taking a different mode of travel or using a different airport. Um, so they're they're having to travel farther right now to get to their final destination because right. this airport was insufficient before we built this terminal. So we're in a much more competitive uh, advantage for the uh, leisure travel. So we're, we're expecting it to level out and be about 50-50 when we're done. But Brownsville has a very large, a lot of people are unaware that Brownsville does have such a, a large industrial base. Um, mm. And so we have a lot of business travel as a consequence of that. Well, that's fantastic. Now, uh, Rob, the, the main phase of the project is complete, but Parabit's work isn't necessarily over. How, how will Parabit continue to work with the Brownsville South Padre Island International Airport to ensure the technology and solutions required uh, carry on into the future? Uh, we're continuing in a in a in a support uh, capacity to upgrade content as required on the various different digital signage platforms. We're working closely with the uh, provider. Genetech to integrate all of the cameras into the uh, video management system. So that way, that once Genetech is a very open platform and for leveraging analytics as well as recording basic video, but as well as the, the, the access camera platform or the products that we installed in all of the doorway and counter mount cameras are edge products. They can actually run the analytics on the actual device itself. So it's a very powerful tool. Many of our banking customers have deployed this product throughout their uh, teller stations and doorway uh, doorways of their branches. Um, and uh, well, as we continue to develop new products and new innovation, I mean, Brian has been very receptive to evaluating and, con and considering any products that we have developed. We have some some new products that we're developing for uh, supervising uh, bathroom areas that are that don't involve a camera that will help in maintaining a, a, a very uh, healthy environment for people in using the various bathrooms in public access areas, um, as well as access control systems for l private lounges, because now that airports are now starting to become meeting places where people may be flying in for a day or so, Many airports are now looking at creating uh, conference spaces so that way travelers or business people can come in, fly into an airport, have two or three meetings airside, and then just get back on the plane and leave. So we have a, a new um, retail access solution that we'll be bringing to the market in September that uh, we've been having actually several dialogues with international and domestic airports that are interested in the solution. Yeah, that's actually a, uh, that's a great idea. I used to travel uh, in my past and uh, you know what, just meeting up with somebody was very important. Uh, and if we could have had a, a meeting place at the airport, man, that would have been fantastic. Uh, so we're closing in on our time today, Brian. Uh, what has you most excited about the new terminal and where things are headed as more and more people return to travel for leisure, for business and everything in between? Uh, really, I think that the opening up the markets, providing the service, um, that's really got me excited for the community so that we can provide routes and destinations that, that people hadn't previously dreamed of coming directly into Brownsville. Um, and we're you know, fortunate to work with a company like Parabit, and he mentioned Genetech and, and some others, um, which is another great thing about Parabit. They're, all of their devices are so compatible and interchangeable. Um, it's scalable. It, you know, it's backward compatible with some of our legacy systems. I mean, there's so many uh, benefits to, to us and the technology that we've built in here that I think that it, it creates that seamless curb to gate experience that airports are really trying to drive towards now. So that when you show up to the airport, whether it's your parking, whether it's checking in with the airlines and ticketing, biometric access controls, um, and being able to uh, self bag tag things, uh, all the all of these steps and components, and even the TSA is getting in on it. They've got a CAT system where you just feed your IDs into it. Um, all the systems that we're working on here really need to have that compatibility. They really, need, like I said before, it's an ecosystem. Um, it's uh, future proofing the terminal, making sure that that we can just move forward without having to worry that we're you know, stuck with some sort of legacy, something or another. So uh, we've been able to work with Parabit to provide the components, provide the uh, technology that will help us achieve that. So I'm really excited about the future of travel. And this terminal is providing 
all the functionality to make that happen. And Rob, same question. What are you looking uh, most forward to about the new terminal? Oh, I, I just like the, the, the receptiveness that we received from Brian and his team on the new technology that we were able to pr promote, uh, present to them with, you know, what my vision is. I mean, creating a safe environment for the airport staff, airline staff, customers coming in to visit, vendors as well, trying to, to develop as many contactless touch points as possible to make people feel comfortable traveling as well as coming to work. These are extremely important things in the security world as it is today. I mean, we hope that this is the, you know, it would be nice to say that this is the end of, of any type of pandemic, but that, that's probably not a, a reality. So we have to all continue to work together to create all different types of contactless touch points to have people feel comfortable uh, we're working now on some projects with um, a partner to possibly roll out uh, robots to perform, perform different types of UVC as well as chemical uh, disinfecting or cleaning of, of areas as well as delivery of materials and pickup of materials or mail. So I think automation is, you know, has just, this is, we're just at the brink of it. I mean, we keep thinking that we, we've gotten to a point where, you know, there's so much technology, but we're, we're just at the tip of it because the world is evolving based upon this pandemic. And I think it's extremely important for us to be focusing on eliminating as many touch points that exist, common touch points. It's just, it's been a, a, a bane to our existence with, with this recent pandemic. And that's really the focus of our business. I love it. I love it. All right, Brian and Rob, that about does it for now. Uh, any last words from either one of you before we go? Brian? Um, I would say uh, keep an eye out for Brownsville. Um, it's it's growing like by leaps and bounds. I don't know if you've seen on the news recently, but uh, we're now launching rockets. There's there's one on the monitor here behind me. Um, they're they're preparing to um, do some tests for that suborbital sub tests. Um, and all the people that, that use all the facilities around here fly in and out of this airport. So for me, I mean, uh, I, I can't visit while you can. It's going to get busier and busier and busier, and then it's just going to be more expensive and harder to get down here. So um, I, I would encourage anybody listening to uh, come take a look uh, and come enjoy it. Uh, enjoy what we've been able to install uh, and, and how convenient and easy the airport itself is to use. Uh, if you compare it to some of the larger airports and the major hubs, around a lot of people just dread going to the airport. We're looking to use the technologies, use the automation that Rob's talking about to, to make it a pleasurable experience. The customer service and, and the customer experience is what um, the whole industry is really focused on. And I think we really hit it out of the park with this one. Sounds great. Uh, Rob, do you have any other last words? No, it's just, it's been a pleasure to, to work with Brian on this project. He's got great vision. So does his team. And Really looking forward to seeing how we can establish other relationships like this and do something like we've done for Brian and, and even take it beyond because we're a big collaborator with our, our client base. We spend a lot of time understanding what their needs are and trying to figure out how to create a future-proof technology that will always provide the ability to upgrade whatever it is that we provide to that client to the, the latest and greatest of what's available. And if folks want to get in touch with Parabit or if they want to get more information about the new terminal at BRO, uh, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, so for the airport, uh, just it's really easy. We have all of our social media. If you go to flybrownsville.com, we've got links there for um, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, or, or anything else that you're, um, that you're partial to, um, or all the information is just available on the website itself. So that's flybrownsville.com. I'd check that out. And Rob? Parabit, you know, visit our website. You know, we have uh, the ability to chat with us off our website. We, we also are attending many trade shows to try to support the uh, airline industry. We're on the ground again. We're, we went to one trade show. And we're on track to do six more this year. Um, so visit, any of, visit us at any of our trade shows. And we do a lot of webinars. So if anybody's interested in any of the solutions that we provide or discussing a, a, a custom concept, uh, we, we do a lot of collaboration via webinar and uh, WebEx solutions. So those are the best ways to get us. All right. 
Big thanks to my guest, Brian Walker, Assistant City Manager and Aviation Administrator for the City of Brownsville, Texas, and Rob Laponis, CEO and President of PowerBit Systems. Brian, Thank Rob, you. take care. Take Thank care. You, have a good day. All right. And thanks once again for joining us for this look at the new passenger terminal at Brownsville South Padre Island International Airport or Airport Code BRO. We'll be back with more episodes. But until then, I'm your host, James Kent. Let's talk again soon.